Hey everybody, Sean Keating here. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Dental Up Podcast. I'd like to introduce Dean Tass. He's our CAD CAM manager at Keating Dental Arts. I'd like to thank him. He's head of our CAD CAM division. And uh, we're going to talk about a few things today uh, when it comes to digital impressions and how we receive it, mm -hmm. what we can do for the dentist to make their jobs easier on sending us uh, this information. But uh, first off, I'd like to start off talking about some sports and, and different things going on. And yesterday was the darn Super Bowl. It was a pretty huge game, wasn't it? It was great. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a game, man. Down 21 zip in the second half when the guy got that last interception and went up 21 nothing. I'm just like man this is this ain't gonna happen I didn't really think it would happen at all but um what a great game man I just I just yeah. loved it and uh, the way they came back at the end and just it's just oh. unbelievable it's what unbelievable. it's all about, it's all about. <laughs> You might be able to say, hey, there's a buckleification on this, yeah. on number 30. Let's really flute it up the facial and, and follow that contour of the root. But he can see it on the, yeah. on the screen where a lot of times it takes a dentist really to be good that to look at an impression, yeah, it looks kind of good. You can kind of see things. But until you really pour it up and see what it comes that out band. like... Absolutely. And then, you know, as we have to peel away the stone around, you know, which is the tissue mm -hmm. to expose the margin because a lot of our guys are going sub and, okay. you know, and uh, so it's a tough, it's a tough situation to really say, you know what, that impression looks okay. Whereas on digital, on the computer, you, yep. it will show you exactly right. what it is, where it's at, because mm -hmm. that's what I'm working off of, exactly what they're saying. So exactly. that's pretty, pretty cool there. So, um. Let me hear about some difficult cases that you've encountered and, you know, what we could do to help them out. We had a couple of ringers the last few weeks right. where we couldn't get uh, the digital file in, but go through a couple of scenarios, what the doctor um, can try to avoid and what, you know, we can ask them to do to help them send us better better files. Right. Well, one of the largest, or I shouldn't say largest, most common problems that we've been occurring with, or that we've had occur is uh, problems with articulation. Okay. And a lot of the times the software that'll have you scan your opposing arch, your working arch, and then it'll do a short, quick, essentially a preview scan for the bite. Okay. And the computer automatically aligns to that bite. Now, since it is a lower resolution scan, you kind of have to really check and be sure that the way the computer automatically placed the two arches is how it is in the mouth. Um, the best way to do it would be go from the midline back for a quadrant. Okay. Um, the more data the computer has to line up, the more accurate the bite's going to be. The more okay. accurate the bite's going to be, <laughs> follows down the whole production line. Are they going just smaller quads like only right. instead of Maybe. going at least to the central? Like we always said that like a lot of triple tray guys will give me, you know, say you're working on 30 and they might give you... 28, 29, yep. and hopefully they got a 31, but that's all they're doing. I mean, they yep. always say go to at least a canine on a, on a quad or impression, but you're saying at least go to the centrals if you can. Right. And right. if possible, go around the horn or no? Um, Not so much. Um, you know, if you cut off a little bit of these centrals and you don't get quite to the midline, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's just a matter of putting faith in technology and the more data that technology has, the more faith you can have in it. All right. So what about, too, with um, what can they avoid sending in digital or analog cases? Like, are we getting things that they shouldn't be sending, or is there sometimes it's just not enough of the information that we need from the beginning, or? Uh, cases where a crown is adapted to a partial are still better off with analog. Uh, the scanners have a hard time picking up all the detail and the Partial class, class and, and all that, and that can just lead to more adjustment. So we get quite office. a few guys that try to send us in for adaptive. It, it happens. It's not very often, yeah. but it does happen on occasion. Oh, it's a nightmare, even with um, just doing it regular where the patient right. can't give up a partial. Right. I mean, we have to do it to where the doctor will sometimes, like, I found the best way is to, like, put, like, a Durley in there mm -hmm. and get it around the crown and mm -hmm. get the clasp. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of adapt that to my wax up and have a little matrix of it. It's, it's quite a MacGyver, you know, yeah, chore to, to get an adaption of a partial off a little, a little jig, a little kind of, you know, um, 
uh, matrix of what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the buckle class, it's a lingual class, it's a rest seat. So what we try to do is we incorporate that into the wax up and it's always a PFM because you gotta build that in to, like the metal area and then you know, facially, you can you got to kind of do it porcelain, yeah. and so you kind of it's a guesstimate, and it's hard. And I can imagine digitally doing it too. Yeah, it's just not quite there yet. Yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> so with us, um, I know our scanners are our favorite scanners are all the three shapes. Correct. And we have quite a few three shapes here, but mm -hmm. we also have the dental wings. Right. Now between the two, I know, um, God, I think our latest one, I mean, on the, on the three shapes, almost like 50 grand for that thing, or what's that, the D2000? That's the 2000, correct. D2000. That's pretty neat with, uh, compared to the other ones that are still work good, but mm -hmm. what does the D2000 do more for us now that it didn't do with the other systems? Well, the biggest benefit that we see in everyday production is that it scans two arches at the same time. Really? So that's cutting down the scan time almost by a third at least, which if you're doing 200 cases a day, that's saving a lot of production time. Absolutely. It also, we have an adaption or a, a jig and kit to scan Cases that are articulated with a conventional semi-adjustable articulator, right, right? Such as a Stratus. Okay. I mean, these are cases that before wouldn't even fit in the scanner. Uh, exactly. And trying to make a bite and scan the bite and go off that, it just added a lot to the inaccuracy of the scans. But now with this, you have the whole thing articulated. Scan it as is. No kidding. That's Jungle. amazing. Yep. Now, what was the thing we got from another company that did something? Was that the, the Medit? The Medit. Medit yeah. Now, what is the Medit and what does that consist of? That's another scanner. Um, it's a unique scanner in that it's completely open to the environment and you can actually fit the entire articulator into it and it scans You're kidding. the whole thing. And it's like a, a, a third of the cost, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. I believe. Not even, yeah. 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 Maybe a little that's less. amazing. I mean, is it, it's it, it's just something um, that they just developed that it was right. a need out there right. and for right. us. What did, we had the head guy from 3Shape here. What was mm -hmm. his name? Do you remember? Uh, Tice. Tice. He's like the head guy. Yeah, like yeah. CEO right up there. Smart guy. Kind mm -hmm. of remind me of like a Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Zuckerberg <laughs> or whatever his name is. But uh, he came in here, just a chill dude. And, He's like the head, they got like 800 employees or something. Yeah. something. Oh, he was very, very hands-on. Very hands-on, very humble. I just mm -hmm. love that guy. Mm -hmm. But he spent three, four hours with you guys out right. there and the, and the crew out there a couple right. weeks ago. But um, did he say anything what's coming around the corner? Or what did he say about us, how we're doing? What um, did he say we're doing? <laughs> I did ask about what was around the corner and he was not inclined to uh, answer my questions. He was pretty excited yeah. though about some new things coming up. That he, he did was. hint that there were some big improvements and some no exciting kidding. opportunities coming up. So What about with, um, with what he went over with us to, mm -hmm. for the doctors, and is there any tidbits for the doctors or and texts that we can, you know, kind of relay some of the information that he gave us? Not so much. Um, he did bring up Three Shape Communicate, which is something that we do use regularly. Uh, that's just an online portal where we can send the doctor preview images of our designs, of any questions we have on margin marking and such as that. So. It allows the doctor to see what we see in the design software on a simpler form. So that's just like a, like an instant messenger Pretty back much. and forth yeah. type thing, kind of yeah. like on, what is it, Facebook or yeah. whatever? Yeah, yeah. Really? Now, we don't use that that much, do we? Or uh, Semi-regularly. So as long as doctors support it, we try to use it as much as possible. All right, good job. What about with, so with the dentist, say here just starting to get into digital impressions and stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what kind of advice could you offer them on first off the system what you you find more i mean do they all come to us the same i mean we just go into our portal and we see it's hey it's from a Seric, it's from a three shape it's from itero it's <laughs> how's that work well like i said each one has their own software so we, we run around and jump from program to program um the best thing to look for is overall costs and your expenditure in terms of the duration that you're going to be using the scanner. Um, they all have yearly, some have monthly fees that can kind of add up. Mm -hmm. So some of the scanners that seem maybe a little more affordable at first, by the time that. you add on right. everything, right. and 
that's why I always see it, you know, like I hear the True Def is like entry-wise one of the cheaper ones, but once mm -hmm. you add everything together, it's comparable to the other ones, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah. so what about with the dentist? So when they're picking that, what are, what are they looking for? What are they looking for? Is there, do you find, because we're, we're open, we don't, you know, um, we take anything mm -hmm. from the doctors, mm -hmm. what's out there, and we got an open architecture type situation here. We don't really have any favorites, do we? I mean, do you think? Do you like working with one more than the other? Or? Uh, personally, I like working with trios the best, uh, just because it's designed, it was produced by the same manufacturer that our design software is, which is 3Shape. Okay. So it's a little bit more seamless in terms of integration to the lab and the doctor. Um, also, it seems to be a little bit higher resolution. Okay. So you have more detail around the margin, and adjacent contacts and all that, which no obviously kidding. helps your design. 3M is also a very good option. Um, we have good results with them doing model lists. Uh, it's also a fair bit cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> which so, but then I was getting back to, but <laughs> when you go with the 3M, which, uh, 3M, which mm -hmm. is the true depth, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. By the time you add it all, though, doesn't it add up? I mean, it, it does it, over time. Um, you know, it's it's technology these days. Yeah. When you're in, you're uh, two generations behind. It seems like absolutely. So, yeah, it's just something with. Um, I heard you know the True Def was you know the most expensive I think out there. You know, if I if I recall mm -hmm. right, but sometimes you know guys are stepping over pennies to lose dollars in a way. Right. I mean, it might be a little bit more, but. It might have more bells and whistles with you know I know it's color yeah it's made yeah. you know um, you know to really streamline your you know your practices mm -hmm. and stuff like that um, I really like that I heard a lot of the doctors really like the Atero is there yeah. anything different yeah. with the Atero I think it's just their their wand and stuff is a lot smaller now right. and it's, right. it's much more easier to use we get good results with Atero as well um, it's also very detailed the Atero company is very supportive both in terms of the lab and the clinical aspect so there's a lot of support there from them any questions or problems that come up it's instant so okay. that's very beneficial what about with us with um, like on the CEREC there's like CEREC you know uh, certified labs or whatever it is right, right. we're part of that is mm -hmm. do they have um, like does 3M have a portal for you know, um, labs or so a dentist is he able to go on to the different um, systems Absolutely. and the labs are recommended. That Absolutely. Are, you know, tell me a little bit about that with how we get our um, our different you know uh, feeds from different companies. When it comes in, is it coming to one base computer or how's that work with you? We have different email accounts associated with the different scanning options. Um, this is to avoid any confusion and overlap and all that. You know, keep the whole system separate, but we can check it regularly. Um, all they have to do is look for our email address. Really? So it's click just, approve, add, and that's it. No kidding. So um, with us, who do you think we do the most with what systems? Um, I would say Itero and 3M are pretty closely tied for first, and Trios is running a very close second. Okay. No kidding. Yeah. So anything else you can add to offer to our dentists on what they need to start off, uh, start doing digital and to work with their lab, won't you? Won't you close us out here? Um, I would recommend taking some time. You know, it's, it's a big investment for your practice. You want to make sure you're making the right choice for your practice and your patients. Um, go to a convention, hold the different cameras in hand, see how they feel. Maybe one doesn't fit your hand very well. That might be reason enough to not justify getting it. Um, see how they, how the software operates in your, in your office, you know, maybe there is a conflict there. And think about the patient, you know, there might be a scanner that has great resolution, but if it's the size of a semi-truck, yeah. your patients aren't going to like that very oh, much. It's tough in the mouth, so, you know, all through. So, yeah. there's, there's some things to consider, but it's hard to go wrong with where we're at now in terms of the different cameras that are on the market. That's awesome. Well, Dean, I want to thank you. And, um, you know, if any of the dentists out there have any questions on this, feel free. What's your extension? 228. <laughs> 228. <laughs> I'm 205. Feel free to give us a call. Um, you know, and if we have any local dentists in, in the Orange County area here, if you want to come on in and uh, come up with a topic and want to talk uh, on one of our live podcasts, 
please give us a call here. Let us know. It's kind of hard to fly in our doctors from out of state for a little, you know, half an hour podcast. But uh, we're always looking for uh, topics and whatever we can do to help you practice smarter, practice better. And uh, that's what we're here for. So I want to thank you for uh, tuning in to this week's Dental Up podcast. It's a little shorter than usual. It was a tough Super Bowl yesterday. <laughs> a little tired. We're busier than heck out there. We're going to get back to work. But uh, again, I want to thank you. If you guys want to see anything about us on our promotions, go to KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo. And then also for any of our, uh, our, our iTunes, you can go to KeatingDentalArts.com slash, slash podcast. If you could go on uh, iTunes and leave us a review, that'd be great. And uh, like us on Facebook. But again, I want to thank you very much for listening in to our Dental Up podcast. And have a great day.